What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I'm the Malt Activist, and I'm so glad to be back. Uh, we took a very, very brief hiatus just to recharge the batteries, but we're back with something quite interesting. That's right, we have with us the Tomatin. Tomatin Decades Part Two. And do you know what's do you know what's interesting about this whiskey? It has whiskeys from five different decades. That's right, it has whiskeys from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and the 2010s. Basically what I'm trying to tell you is that in here is a little bit of 50 year old whiskey. <gasps> What's up everybody? Thanks for tuning in. This is the Mod Activists Whiskey Channel. Uh, welcome to first time viewers here on this channel. Just to let you know, we, we talk about whiskeys in the most uh, uh, non-pretentious way. We're not elitists. We are, we are simple folks with simple pleasures and good whiskey is one of them. So if you want to hear about whiskey chat, whiskey reviews, uh, rants, uh, angry, angry sermons and speeches on how whiskey industry is letting us down and how and how capitalism will be the death of all then this, this this channel is for you of course not as melodramatic as i'm making it out to be and welcome back to my regulars i missed you guys thank you thank you for always being there and it's highly highly appreciated so Ha! Huh. Like I said, if you're new to the channel, uh, hit the hit the subscribe and the like and the all that jazz, and that'll really help. And for those who are returning and are already subscribed, I can't thank you enough. So thank you. And uh, now enough of uh, 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 enough of unashamed uh, self. Uh, self uh, uh, promotion. We are uh, we're now about to review this very interesting whiskey, this Tomatin Decades Two. So here it is, here it is, there you go. The Tomatin Decades 2. Now, for those of you who don't know the history behind this, let me tell you something. Uh, the first time, and since this is two, there should be a one, of course. So the first Tomatin Decades uh, was released in 2011, and it was to pay homage or uh, show respect to Douglas Campbell. Now Douglas Campbell was their dis uh, master distiller and he'd been there since the 60s at the distillery. So they said, you know, for every decade that you've been here at the distillery, we are going to, we're going to bottle a whiskey, call it the decades, and we will have whiskeys from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s in that particular bottle. And so the decades, um, expression from Tomatin was born. They then went a step further and in 2019, which is this bottle that I'm holding up, they've released the Tomatin Decades 2. And that was to commemorate pretty much everybody who's been at the distillery for the last 50 years. So they have whiskeys here from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000 and 2010. Now, I do have a complete list of whiskeys that uh, have gone into this. Uh, basically, first of all, we're looking at 21 different casks from five different decades. That's right, 21 different casks. Uh, we have um, uh, ex bourbon casks, we have ex sherry casks. Uh, we have refill French oak casks, and we finally have recharged Verdejo wine casks. Okay, so these four different type of casks make up this particular whiskey, uh, which is kind of strange because on the label it just says American and European oak casks, but I guess that's what they mean. They probably thought it was too much to write all of this, but you will find the literature on their website. Now, uh, before <laughs> before I go ahead, I, f I thought it was a bit, um, 
it was a bit sneaky because when I was doing my research and I went on the Tomatin website to look up the the decades too, I uh, it said 50 year old single malt, which technically this isn't right because uh, a single malt is defined by the youngest whiskey that is in the bottle, and in this case, it's it's actually a. It's actually a six-year-old whiskey, if I'm not mistaken, but I will get those dates over to you in just a second. But on the website, as you can see right now, it says 50-year-old single malt, which is, um, which is misleading to say the least because there is, yes, some 50-year-old single malt in this, but it is not a single malt whiskey. And, uh, and I don't think they really clarify moving forward. So that, that looked a bit sketchy. Plus, they had... Um, uh, they had, uh, they've got 45% ABV written on the uh, on the website, whereas the bottle is actually 46%. So uh, I'll, I'll just chalk that down to a typo uh, and, and won't think much about it. But I do point my finger at the very bold statement that says 50 year old single malt whiskey, which this whiskey is not. So let's be very, very clear about this. Okay, so what do we know? We know this is bottled at 46% ABV and it's quite readily available um, for anywhere between 150 and 200 pounds. Depends where you're looking for. Uh, the average price I got for this was about 160, 165 pounds. Uh, and uh, for that, I don't know, I'm in mixed, uh, sort of uh, um, mixed emotions regarding that because I, I don't think it's really worth that uh, that amount of money uh, because uh, first of all we don't even know how much of the 50 year old is in here or, or 40 year old or whatever it is um, so you know I'm gonna leave that to you uh, as far as the uh, the casks are concerned we have with us uh, three casks from 1970s we have a cost from 73 75 and 1977 from the 80s we have a, we have some casks uh, distilled in December 1980 which were finished off in three uh, well sorry had a three year finish in ex Olorosa sherry casks then from the 90s, we have a first filled ex bourbon barrels distilled in 1995. From the 2000s, we have the Richard Verdejo wine barrels distilled in uh, January 2000 and June 2009. And finally, from the 2010s, we have the refill French oak barrels, which were distilled in March 2013 making the youngest whiskey in this bottle six years old. Now, haha, great concept. I, I love the idea. I, I love uh, any sort of release or expression that pays homage to a tradition or to people. Uh, and so I, and, and if they do something to represent that, I really, really appreciate it. This is a natural color and non-chill filtered. It's gonna pour very, very, there you go. Tomatin been it's it's been on my radar for for a while now. And when I say a while, I mean about a couple of years. Um, some uh, the, their co range is is doing really really well. I quite like the twelve and the fourteen. Their cost strength is also very nice. Uh, and uh, I got introduced to Tomatin properly through uh, through a tasting we had organized and you know sat with the brand ambassador and sort of went you know went through the co range and I really really. Uh, took a liking to it. So anything to Madden is uh, is uh, good news as far as I'm concerned. Mm, however, however, we have here this rather special, rather special whiskey. It has whiskeys from five different decades. <sighs> Look. You know, I know we spoke about price and money, etc. But the proof is in the pudding. So let's start with the nose. It's a very, very tropical nose. I get a lot of tropical fruits like mangoes and papayas and uh, and apricots. <sighs> Some vanilla in there, and a nice mix of uh, spices like cloves, cumin, and uh, rounded off with some almonds. So I like the nose here. <sighs> it's quite fresh and tropical. 
So first off, you know, good news. I'm happy to, uh, I'm happy to sit and nose this all day. But as you and I very well know, whiskey is meant for drinking, not just nosing. Thank you. This is what natural color looks like. So thank you, Tomato, for that. Uh, anyway, now uh, I guess there's nothing left for me to do but dance. Ooh, very thin, very, very thin on the mouthfeel. I don't think it's chill filtered, but it seems really, really thin, which is weird. Anyway, so thin on the mouthfeel. I get some mango, you know, those tropical fruits are back with the mango, apricot, and papaya. Um, I've, I can feel the sherry in here as well, but then more importantly, it's more wood shavings and cigar box that come to mind towards the end. So, you know, overall, decent. Decent flavor profile, but not really complementing. Or, <clears throat> uh, but what's not complementing the flavor, good flavor profile is the weight of the whiskey. <clears throat> Excuse me, the weight of the whiskey because it's, it's quite thin. Um, I I don't like it on my palate so much. Yeah, definitely. Um, I wish I wish the presence of the wood shavings and the cigar box was uh, less. And in its place, I wish um, uh, the fruits were a little more amplified and I would have liked to have seen some honey and, and strong vanillas in here as well for it to be a little more balanced, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I, I like the um, I like the uh, tropical fruit nuance that the mangoes, apricot uh, bring to it, uh, but I don't like on the palate the, um, the rather rough rough edges which the wood shaving and cigar box is bringing to it. Uh, so for me, this is not a perfect whiskey. And an overall, okay finish. Nothing nothing fantastic to, or, or to write home about. So for me, this is not a perfect whiskey. It has its definite flaws on the palate. However, I do like the story. I do, uh, the wood shavings on the nose also very prominent now. And I think it's because I've drunk it and I have the wood shavings on my palate that I'm getting the wood shavings on the nose as well. So interesting, interesting sort of journey there in terms of discovering the flavors. Uh, so like I said, decent nose, uh, decent nose. Um, let me down on the delivery in terms of the weight of the whiskey. It's not as robust as I wanted it to be. Uh, you know, something, and, and I figured, and you know, I'd hope that if it's got whiskeys from the 70s in here, I'd get that sort of old school viscosity and that oiliness that I associate with older whiskeys, but it's not here, which leads me to suspect that there's um, a, a greater amount of younger whiskeys in here versus older whiskeys. I wish I had tasted the Decades one, the original, which everybody seems to like. And I think there was probably a more fair representation of the Decades in there compared to this one. Again, you know, this is purely conjecture on my part because the recipe has not been given to anybody. So it is what it is. Um, and uh, getting back to price, 160 pound average. <sighs> The short answer is no. Do not buy this whiskey for 160 pounds. Even if you think you will be tasting 50 year old liquid in here. My, um, my contention is I don't know how much. I don't know how much 50 year old liquid is in here for it to warrant that fairly hefty price tag because for 160 pounds, you can get a lot of things. And um, I don't think you should be spending it on the Tomatin decades to, um, in fact, maybe go out and, hey, you know, 160 pounds will get you a, an amazing meal at, at, uh, at maybe a Gordon Ramsay restaurant for one, not for two, just the one. Um, so maybe do that or take your, or take your significant other uh, to uh, to a special night out 
and I'm sure that'll be money better spent than spending it on this particular whiskey. Like I said, it's not bad. Um, and, and the reason I'm not upset is because uh, this whiskey is part of my uh, whiskey tasting club and you know we put we, we pull in some money and then we then we buy some some interesting whiskeys to taste and so the sh so the cost is shared amongst everybody so this didn't I didn't buy this for 160 pounds I don't think I'd ever buy uh, something like this for 160 pounds um, yeah so um, I don't know what to say I, I mean I know what to say obviously don't <laughs> Don't buy this whiskey, that's fine, don't worry about it. Uh, but you know, it's good to know if you were planning on, then my suggestion is split it between five or six, or even 10 guys, uh, and ha make an evening out of it instead of buying one and then putting it on your shelf. So that's my, that's my advice to you. And uh, I hope I hope you like this video, man. I hope you like this video more than I like this whiskey. So, so thank you, thank you for joining me for this whiskey review. I'm The Malt Activist, until next time, peace.